My name is Marinelli. My story is about how I was adopted from Colombia. My father had a dream for me to have a better life in the United States. And the family that adopted us, that dream for him turned into a nightmare. My dad, from what I understand, that he was sick a lot. My mom, she had uh, a last set of twins. And on the last set of twins, I don't know if it was right away or like a few months after, but she passed on. After she had passed, my biological father could not take us on anymore. He w it was due to his health that he couldn't, he could not take care of us. And so he had decided that he, the best thing that he could do for us was put us up for adoption. So I was two years old when I was put in the orphanage. No, I don't remember anything about it. I had two older sisters that were put in the orphanage with me. So from what I understand, as far as my adoption, I understood that we were put out on a radio station and that's how this adopted family had heard about us. So they came from the United States. They went to Colombia to adopt us. And as far as I know, during that time, uh, we got to remember this was back in the 70s. So a lot of the laws, as strict as they are now, I don't believe a lot of the laws back then. As a matter of fact, I know a lot of the laws back then were not as strict as they are now. So I'm not sure if it's because my adopted dad actually was able to pay his way into certain things not being done right for us to be adopted. Um, I'm not sure exactly what strings he pulled, but my adoption was not done correctly. The paperwork that we had come in on, it was done under one number, which is really unusual. There is no way that you can bring three children to the United States under one number. So from the time that I was two years old until about, I was, I believe I was about 11 and a half years old. I went through hell with this family. Me and my sisters were used as child slavery. It was a huge farm. It wasn't your regular background, about backyard type work. This was grown men's work. We would um, chop wood. We would bale hay. We would dig trenches for uh, pipes we would carry buckets of gravel and sand. And we're talking the buckets and gravel and sand from the river. So of course that was, it was wet and heavy. They did not feed us very well. It's just amazing that we even had the strength to be able to do this type of work. Some of the worst times that I remember working on the farm, I, I for me personally, I believe I can remember back till about three years old. And from that time, I remember working like a grown man. And I remember like a lot of our clothes were bought from Goodwill. They were either too small or overly sized. We didn't have the proper gear really to be outside because where we were raised, we had all four seasons. So we were out rain, sun, shine. It didn't matter, snow. We were out there working. We had chickens. And so my sister, she would go and we, she would steal the eggs from the chickens and she would go down to the pit, the fire pit that we had and she would scramble us eggs really quick so then we could eat. But the fear was that they would smell the food being cooked so she would do it so quickly and then we'd throw other stuff onto the fire just to make it smell different. They didn't like to see us having any type of fun or laughing or uh, singing or you know anything like that so for them it was they they always had to have us in this bubble like in this it was just a constant turmoil just constant constant turmoil that we were living in and I was about six years old when my adopted dad beat the dog but now that's not the first time he was a very angry my adopted dad was very angry so he would beat the animals. He beat a horse. He beat the dogs. There was a little poodle that we had and he would kick the poodle and he would throw it into the, literally throw it from the living room into the family room and the dog would hit the ground. So much so that that dog could not hold its own feces. And that was my dog. Actually, I, that, I, I took on that dog. Like I love that dog. And the one that he beat so badly it was all because he was barking a lot. My adopted dad was so full of himself. He was such an evil, so arrogant. He was just, 
he was on top of the world and everybody was beneath him. So we went from the time that they would tell us to go out in the mornings, they would, they would get up us up early in the mornings and sometimes we would go without meals and they would tell us, go out and go work. They didn't care how long it was. They would leave us out there all day, whether it be rain, shine, sun, it didn't matter. We were to be out there until that task was completed. Every now and then, this adoptive family that adopted us, they did have five children of their own. The rest of us though, the us adopted children were treated so different from their biological children. So every now and then, maybe I was rare, it was so rare that you would see them come out and do any type of work. Maybe every now and then they would dig a ditch or they would help uh, feed cows or they would, but it was never consistent like we were we were put into the into a family room there was a board that was put across from the family room into the living room and we dare not to have crossed that basically that was our border and if any time we were hungry if any time we needed anything if any time we just wanted to speak to our adopted mom we had to stand at that board and we had to yell until somebody responded there was sometimes they would just blatantly ignore us and we would just be standing there yelling and yelling or they would just laugh at us. If we were hungry, my adopted family, what they would do, they, they would think it was so funny. They would throw the food that they had from their meals, they would throw it into the family room. And of course, my, that little dog that I told you that my adopted dad would throw into the family room. Um, she would run really quick to go get the food, but there are some times I would go and run down and just literally leap on the floor and I would try to grab the scraps. Or if we didn't get any food, then she had dog food that they would put in a bowl. If we got hungry enough, we would pretend like the dog food tasted like peanut butter. Or we would say, oh, this one tastes like cake or this one tastes like a cookie. So we never were, we never were told as to why we never were allowed in the other side of the house. Later, we were always told that we were just not part of the family. I was actually, I know I was probably around eight years old when I found out that we were adopted and they, my adopted mom had said, I love you, but I love my natural kids better. I will never forget that. That hit in such a manner that when I say that, I still remember the way I looked at her and the way my adopted mom looked at me with the coldest, meanest, just cruelest eyes. And like there was no, there was no feeling there. There was no feeling. So any of the stuff that they did to us, never was there an explanation, never was there at the reasoning why. They might have told us, oh, today you did something like you didn't clean up the floor the right way. So we would get beatings. Well, you didn't uh, clean a sink or you didn't uh, stack the pile of wood right outside. So we would get beatings. So that plywood was used as a border. We would go up to it and call for my adopted mom. And so they would just sit in the living room and just stare at us as we were calling or they would just act like that we didn't even exist. It really scared us. We would literally pee our pants. So of course, when she would come out, she would see that we did that. And that would be, we would get into a lot of trouble. We would get, she would beat us for doing that. Then that's where she would start calling us names and telling us that we were just messy. We were worthless. We were, why do, why, uh, why were we ever born? Why did we ever come? If they did allow us across that border, they would, it was for housework. So we would go in there, we would do dishes um, after they ate. Okay, we didn't eat, they ate. After the mess that they made in the kitchen, we would have to go and we would have to clean it. And so we would be in there doing the dishes and we would find scraps in the garbage. And so sometimes whoever it was that was in there doing the dishes, they would stuff down their pants the scraps or one of the other things that that they would do is they would put the food into the garbage and then the garbage would be thrown out into a bigger bin that was out by the shed and then later we would go out there and go get the food and we would eat it 
there was times that my adopted family, they would leave for a little while. So what they did is they locked us into the family room. Well, again, we learned how to survive and there was times that we were very hungry and we learned how to unlock the door. Now, my adopted mom, they had put this vase and the vase had a certain color ink in it. And so they would fill it up and they would put it on the other side of the door. So if you were to open up the door, the vase would fall and the liquid would come out. We, the first few times, we didn't catch the vase in, um, fast enough that the liquid would fall out. But we were, again, we were survivors. We knew that my adopted mom kept food coloring in a cupboard up in the kitchen. And so what we did is we learned how to make the color of the, uh, the color of this, whatever she had put inside this vase, we learned how to make that color and we would fill it right back up because knowing that when they would come home, they would check that vase. Unfortunately, we were off sometimes by inches or sometimes by an inch and they knew, they knew. So there was repercussion for that and we would get beat. The type of beatings that we got, these were beatings that should have killed us. There was, um, I can tell you a few examples. My, I had gotten beat so bad one time that my leg, my right leg, literally I couldn't walk on it. What, what it, what my adopted dad did, I don't know, but he beat me bad enough to where I couldn't walk on it. And it was like that for the longest time. And even still today, now I have problems with my leg, but I have this limp. My sister, another one of my older sisters, they would one one of the things that they liked to do was hit us underneath the chin until we turned black and blue underneath the chin. But that was my adopted mom who did that a lot. And I don't know why she would do that, but she would do it in our chins, like underneath here would swell. So when we go to bed at night, we would have a hard time swallowing. And they beat one of my sisters so bad that she she fainted. When she fainted, there was a chainsaw and it cut her right here on her chin and still to this day she has that scar another time you know they they would have us bend up my adopted dad again he was a he was perverted he was a very sick man and they would have us pull down our pants and they would have us bend over and they would beat us with croquet sticks with shovel handles with whatever they could get their hands on that's what we got beat with and we are talking beatings to where you went to bed at night and you couldn't lay on your back you couldn't sit on your rear end. We were bleeding, but yet we never, never did we seek any, they never seeked any medical care for us. They, we never went and saw a doctor. We healed, we healed on our own. We all have our own scars, but we did heal. So over time, <clears throat> as we got older, one of the things is that my adopted father, he did rape his own daughter and so but again that was really never talked about with us until years later that they felt that somehow they needed to sit us down and tell us that he did something to his adopt to his older daughter and that he would never do anything like that to us um what that point was i'm not sure but either way we saw her she started running away and so, of course, little by little, my other sister started following what she was doing because then they started realizing that the things that happened to us was not, was not right. Things that were happening were not right. And so when my sister started running away, police did start getting involved. They did come to our house. There was a few times when if, my, if the police came to the house, my adopted mom would tell us, go downstairs or go, go, go get in a room or, you know, she wouldn't ever really allow them to speak with us. So when my two older sisters finally ran away and they both succeeded, when I believe both of them went into foster care, but it was a very short amount of time, I started following the same thing. One of the public schools that we went to, I had a really hard time in school and um, I would cheat. And so my adopted mom found out about that. And so I knew that if I went home, that I was gonna get into a lot of trouble. So I didn't go home. What I did is I snuck onto a bus that wasn't working in the school and I snuck 
on that bus and I laid low in the bus and I hid there for a day and a half. I hid in that bus. And then what I did is I snuck out of the bus. I went around to the school and I started looking for open windows where I found this screen. And so I popped off the screen and I crawled through the window and I found a phone. Well, there was one girl that would always befriend me. And she, for some reason, she had given me her phone number like a couple weeks before. She'd given me her phone number and she had told me, if you ever need anything, give me a call. I held on to that number. I was able to call her. Her and her dad came out and they met me at the school and they took me to their house and I stayed with them for a few days. But again, my her dad didn't want to get into trouble with the law and he knew the right thing he had to do. He had to call the cops. And so he did, he told me, he said, we're having to call the cops. You know, your parents will be here to get you. And I told him, I said, I do not want to go back. And that's when I started telling him everything that was going on. The cops showed up, they separated me from my adopted parents. And when they looked at my body, they saw bruises, old bruises, new bruises. They saw scars. They went back and forth. I don't remember exactly how long I was sitting. I was sitting in the bathroom. They were in the kitchen and they had come earlier. So it was already middle of the night. So it took them a while to kind of go back and forth and talk about what they were going to do. And finally, they took me to foster care. So I was 11 and a half when I went into foster care. The first night that I went there, I just remember laying in bed and it was dark. We, I was in a room with other girls. And the next day when I got up, I didn't know what to do. Mind you, I had never been shown. I never even took a shower when I was in the adopted home. They didn't show us how to take showers. So when I got into foster care, that was something that the, the foster children had to show me. They had to show me how to use soap for a proper way, shampoo, how to turn on the, the, uh, the shower, how to, but you know what? I thought I was a cool kid. Like I felt really cool doing this stuff because I could do stuff that other people were doing. So I felt cool. So this is kind of where the abuse ends, but then that's where my life started going a different direction. And, uh, certain things happened that I started going into. I got, what I did is I thought it was funny that I would threaten to kill myself at that time. I didn't realize what I was doing. I thought it was just funny. I would scare people. That's what I thought was, you know, I would be like, you know, and I think it was a, a, a coping mechanism. Um, later I learned it was a coping mechanism, but at that time I didn't realize why I like to try to scare people. And so I had a knife in my hand and one of the foster kids were sitting there eating her cereal. And I told her, I said, and, but I said it in a way that was really demonic. I mean, I told her, I said, oh, yeah, you want to see what I can do? I'm going to cut myself. And I thought it was funny. And so what I did is I cut my finger. And you know what? When I did that, this is going to sound awful, but it felt relieving. That pain felt relieving. And I think that's what led me into cutting myself. And um, I would take erasers later and I would like, scratch on my arms and I would do all this stuff that it, it was it, it was a way of me bringing out everything that I had been through but I didn't know that at the time I didn't know I thought I was just crazy so at first as uh, self-harming it started off as a joke and then eventually though that did turn into some serious I started making some deep cuts on myself to the point and then later I got into where I really did want to kill myself and that's when, but that part came when I was put into the mental institution. So when I was 12 years old, I went into the mental institution and I was in there until I was 14 years old. And during that time in that mental institution, that was crazy. I literally did go crazy. It's something that they use to calm down a person that's having mental breakdowns and all that. And I actually, I would attack grown men I would go after anybody that tried, they would tell me, Muddy, you know, we're just trying to help you. We're just trying, we want to talk to you. And I was so, oh, I was so defiant. I hated people. I hated adults. I had no respect. It was nothing for me to live for anymore. And I felt like I was 
crazy. So after I got out of the mental institution, I got in, I, I joined the wrong crowd. I got into, I became a teen mom at the age of 15. So when I had my son, um, I was very messed up. I mean, I was basically in and out of, um, I was, my lifestyle was not, it was wild. It was very wild. But the one thing I did know is that I couldn't handle him and I had no idea what to do. And so my aunt and my uncle, and so then they came down, they got me and they helped me with to get him into the right adoption agency. And so he was adopted when he was two months old. After that, then uh, by the time I turned almost 18, 18 years old, I had another kid and my daughter I told myself I would not give up my my daughter and I told myself I would raise her and I did. I raised her with plenty of mistakes. I made plenty of mistakes, but I would say probably about when I was finally 19 years old is when I met this person and my husband now and um, I met him. Uh, he was in the military at the time. But then again, all those years of everything that I had gone through, that was carried into our marriage. So after I met my husband, um, I, me personally, I became very abusive. I, but I didn't realize every, all the baggage that I carried into my marriage. And a lot of it did show up until probably about a year after me and my husband now that, um, that we, that I even realized all this stuff was coming into our marriage. And he put it up with it for about five years. I became physically, verbally abusive. Uh, I cut him one time on his arm. He was so mad. He didn't go to the hospital. Now he was a military man and he, he sold himself. I had a choice. Either I was going to go and continue being the same person that I got away from, or I was going to turn myself around and I was going to be a better person. And that's exactly what I did. The only thing I can sit here and tell you is please take it one day at a time. Take it one moment at a time. Don't be so hard on yourself.